The summer transfer window is supposed to be that time where you've got a big smile on your face. You're talking about the new signings. We're going to transform your team and how things are going to be different next season. At this moment in time, United fans are sitting there with bated breath, waiting for the club to let them down. And Chelsea United to let them down, kind of as they have done for years and years and years. I hope that this summer is going to be different. I did explain in my video yesterday, I think a lot of the frustration up until this point has been slightly over-exaggerated. But my biggest fear in this summer transfer window is that Manchester United do not prioritise that defensive midfield position. And it looks like it might be becoming, be becoming a reality. I want to run through it in this video. This has been led by the Yves Basuma story that's broken today with his move to Spurs, but I want to go into it in a bit more depth. Please watch this video. I've done a video last week and I will keep this at the top of the narrative because I feel it's incredibly important and just cannot be overlooked no matter how many Frankie de Jong or Anthony signings we make this summer. And we really overlook that key weakness inside this squad again. I don't think we can. Of course, this is being led by seemingly Spurs getting Yves Basuma for 25 million from Brighton, which seems like an outrageous price. Now he's running out of his contract. This is the last summer they can get him. He's, of course, got that ongoing court case. Could that have been part of the reason why we didn't go in for him? Potentially. We're leaving that in the assumption pile because we have no idea what's going on there. But 25 million for Yves Basuma, the profile of a player, the sort of midfielder. As I said, I'm looking at all these midfielders that I mentioned in this video. With a specific profile set, I'm looking at them for a specific reason to be signed to play in a specific role at United. They've all got similarities in that respect that we just do not have at the club. If you're looking at players that we've been linked with, Calvin Phillips, tentative links, it never really went past the fact that he was Leeds born and bred and he was never come to United. No one's going to get too hung up about that. We look at all the other ones and there's been, there's been a lot so far this summer. You've got Yves Basuma there, looks like he's going to Spurs. You've got Calvin Phillips, technically could have done that role, was never coming to United. You've got Bubakar Kamara, who left and joined Aston Villa on a free transfer. You've got Aurelien Chouameni, who of course was the cream of the crop, the top player in all out of all of these that would have transformed Manchester United. I think he always wanted to join Real Madrid. I'm not going to slate the club for that. 100 million euros he's gone for. And now Spurs are there with a 25 million pounds move for Yves Basuma. You've got different types of midfielders there. You've got one in Kamara who's a free transfer. You've got one in Basuma who's an underpriced Premier League proven player. You've got one in Chouameni who's the top of the pile, top of the list. And you've got Calvin Phillips who you could try and lure away from your nearest rival. Well, not nearest rival, but close regional rival in Leeds. The only player that we've really kind of been linked with is Ibrahim Sangare. And I spoke to Rick Elfrink from uh, Eindhoven Daily. And he said, look, Manchester United aren't particularly in for him right now. There is a 37 million euro release clause. I hope to God that we get some sort of surprise. Conrad Lehmer, another player inside that role, inside that profile of that sort of midfielder that Manchester United, simply put, do not have. Because we need that sort of player. And I refuse to think, and look, maybe I'll be proven wrong. And I'd love to be proven wrong for people to clip up one of these videos and show next season when we've gone through a wonderful season without signing a defensive mind in midfield. And I'm like, look, okay, Eric Ten Hag didn't need one in his system. But if Eric Ten Hag doesn't need one in his system, it's going to be quite unique. Because we can look all around Europe at all the top teams. Every single one of them has an example of a player who fits the profile that Manchester United miss. Rodri at Manchester City, a crucial player for how well they played last season. Fabinho at Liverpool, a massively important team player inside that team. Casemiro at Real Madrid. Kante at Chelsea, not particularly last season by comparison, but Kante and what he's done at Chelsea. If you want to go uh, closer to something that United fans can remember, Condogbio, remember how good he was for Atletico Madrid when they knocked us out of the Champions League? It was in that sort of role and that profile that Manchester United simply do not have. And maybe Yves Basuma could have been a perfect example of that. I'm not going to sit here and, and slam the club for not signing Yves Basuma and saying, oh, that's another one that we missed out on. And technically, it is another one that we missed out on. But we've missed out on, by the looks of it, plenty. I wouldn't say we missed out on Calvin Phillips, but that's one that we've been tentatively linked with and it's not going any further. Kamara was available in a free transfer. True and many if we really wanted to go for a top draw level player. And then he's assumed for 25 million. Then what about Sangada? Then what about Lehmer? There are so many of those midfielders who up until this point, we're not really talking about. The only midfielder we're talking about is Frankie de Jong. Now, I do consider him a priority. 
And that's how shit United's squad is. There are so many priorities you're looking at and you're going, Christ, which one do you go for first? The club has gone for that midfielder that will massively help us in possession. Massively help this Ten Hag system, bringing the ball out from the back. There's no doubt that that's a huge priority. But when you're partnering Frankie de Jong with either Fred or McTominay, or if you really want to try and stretch the options, James Garner, none of which suit that role, then you're starting off on the back foot. Because if you were to go over to the tactics board and you were to take a look here at how Manchester United could be setting up next season, I've got De Jong there and I've highlighted Alvarez or Shona as the, t as the two players that, that Eric Ten Hag has used inside that system. And simply put, Manchester United, I do not think, can afford to go into the season with the idea that they might be the options inside that role. None of them are suited to that role. All of them would be a compromise in that role. And it would just be a massive oversight for United to just not go after Phillips or Kamara or Chuameni or Yves Basuma or Sangare or Conrad Lehmer. Hey, look, I hope, because this game was a bit of a curveball, right? Nobody was expecting this from... Nobody came into Tuesday the 14th of June expecting to hear confirmation that Spurs had agreed a £25 million pounds deal. By the way, £25 million, incredible. Uh, no doubt it will rise up to a little bit more than that, but still, whatever it's going to be, it's for a player of his Premier League proven quality. Underpriced. Fair play to Spurs. But nobody expected us to get that news. So what I want to see and hear is out of nowhere, boom, Manchester United have agreed to pay the release clause of Ibrahim Samgade. Very straightforward negotiation there. 37 million euros, player's done, he'll join, happy days. No need for drawn out negotiations there. Hopefully we can sneak in and go in there ahead of Bayern Munich to get Conrad Lehmer, Conrad Lehmer sorry, from RB Leipzig. That'll be wonderful to get that sort of news. But right now, Manchester United, and this is a frustration that I think is fair among United fans. We're going after De Jong and we seem to be parking all the other buses. No real conversations going on about Yuri and Timber now. No real conversations at any point over a defensive midfielder start the conversations that we're hearing about Anthony and Anthony will be a good signing yes but it just would not be as important a signing as somebody like Yves Basuma and I think that's where the that's where I think frustration is justified among United fans because for me as I said it's my this I don't know whether this is a personal thing or whether you all agree with me but for years and years and years I've gone on and I'm sick of talking about how much United need a player like Yves Basuma like Already in true and many, like Bubakar Kamara, like Calvin Phillips, somebody in that profile who's not sole job, but their responsibility is screening and protecting the back four and bringing the ball out, recycling possession and making sure that the team stays in control of the game. Out of possession, they are vital footballers and Manchester United's biggest weakness, the thing that's made it so easy to play against us, is how crap we are out of possession. We could just be played through easily. Maguire and Varane can just get squared up by attackers straight away because we've got no midfielder in there protecting them. Dangadi could, of course, do a job there. Conrad Lehmer could, of course, do a job there. But at this moment in time, United seemingly are doing what United previously have done. And we're focusing on one signing and everything else is getting pushed to the side. A top club should be able to negotiate on more than one front at once. And I, I like to think that United are doing this. As I said, I'd be so happy to be surprised with out of nowhere this sort of announcement from David Ornstein that United have agreed to pay uh, Sangade's release clause or that we've agreed a deal with, with RB Leipzig for Conrad Lehmer. That would be fantastic. That's what I want to see. And that's what I hope is still happening behind closed doors. And it's why I won't really go too intensely harsh on these sorts of videos where I'm speaking about what I think are justified frustrations. I think up until this point, it's been over-exaggerated to a certain degree because, let's be honest, the Frank of the Young situation is dragging out because it's complicated. Because Barca don't want to sell. Because De Jong doesn't really want to leave. It's not as simple as someone like, I don't know, Sangari, where you've got a release clause and you pay it, you sign the player. Easy. But that one was a bit of a surprise. A bit of a curveball. And I'm just, I've got a big fear that Manchester United are, are going to go into this season and we're not going to sign a player like Yves Basuma. And that just strikes me as... Really? Are you really going to do that? Are you really going to go into this season, say we signed De Jong, and you're going to play that as your midfield options with Fred, McTominay or Garner to play alongside him? 
It doesn't strike me as good enough as a midfield duo that has balance. And as I said, if you look at every single top team around Europe at the moment, Rodri at City, Fabinho at Liverpool, Casemiro at Real Madrid, Kante at Chelsea. I've pulled in the Condobbia example as well. It's just part of the modern game, right? It, you need that type of player with that sort of profile in your squad to make a team a team. Might not be the sexiest signing, but it's just so crucial. And I've just got a big fear that United really aren't just, we're, we're just overlooking it. Because there's so many different types of, of players that we could have been linked with. A big, huge, that would have been a significant move from a Premier League rival, big money. Bubakar Kamara available on a free transfer. True, many the biggest of money. That was the absolute top level signing. And then he was assuming out of nowhere for 25 million. All different types of signings, all in the same profile. All kind of overlooked for United so far. As I said, we haven't really gone further than tentative links to Sangari. Now, I hope this is uh, perfect and it's going to be Manchester United out of nowhere announcing a deal. But I do have a bit of a fear that maybe, maybe United and, and Eric Ten Hag really are just not going to look to sign a defensive midfielder. And for me, I think that's a massive oversight. You can let me know in the comments below whether you think I'm wrong to be fearful of that. Maybe you've got a different biggest fear in this summer transfer. And you can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But there's no doubt it's been a frustrating start. I still have hope and confidence that United, by the time the season starts, will be good. But will we have signed a defensive midfielder? I can't say that with any real confidence anymore. And I think that's a big problem.